Hello everyone, my name is Karishni Filander. This presentation is for the Environmental and Sustainability Studies course, the 2 to 1 module at the University of the Western Cape. The content of this presentation includes certain food, certain food crop and food security. My crop is radish. So yeah, let's get into the content of this video. table of contents showing all the sections that will be discussed or included in this presentation. Radish belongs to the Drosophorial mustard family. Scientists tentatively locate the origin of Raffina sativas in Southeast Asia and China. Radishes are a fast growing crop and can be eaten within 25 days after planting. It is a common food crop in Egypt. According to Mobile Cuisine, radishes and onions were paid as wages to the ancient Egyptian laborers who built the pyramids. Radishes are a very nutritious crop. It is low in calories and it is a good source of vitamin C. This project deals with certain food crops in relation to food security. This is an analysis of radish and if it will be available in the year 2050 to guarantee food security. Radish is in fact a very effective crop. It is fast maturing, there's a successive harvesting However, the crop is not drought tolerant, which can be problematic in the future. The region I chose was France, as radish is very common in France. The French often refer to the eating of the crop as the French breakfast. Many types of radishes are grown in France to form part of the French breakfast. Radish is a cool season crop which is most likely to, to grow in spring and autumn. The climate of France is ideal for the growing of radishes. The western part of France is where radishes are most likely to occur, as radishes are a cool season crop. And the western part of the country are characterized by the most ideal climate conditions for radishes. It has small temperature ranges, ample rainfall, and cool summers. Radishes can be grouped or categorized into four main types. These are only two different kinds of radishes that are portrayed in these pictures. They are categorized by shape, length, color and sizes. I used the gbuff.org website to obtain data on my species occurrence. The GBIF is the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, which is an international organization that provides scientific data on biodiversity. After my data was obtained from GBIF, I then sorted it, as you can see the picture on the left hand side, and then I loaded it onto the to the Diva GIS program on the right hand side. The Diva GIS program is a geographic information system software program and it is used for the analysis of biodiversity data. Then after my data was uploaded into GDiva, ecological niche and ecocrop modeling follows. Models were done for a current global distribution, which is the year 2000, and then B, future global distribution. The future is the year 2015, and also I see current regional distribution and the future regional distribution. After the modeling was done, I got my graphs, the interpretations were made. I did a prediction for the current and future global distributions using the domain module. As can be seen, a majority of the world map is covered in dark green. 
which indicates 50 to 90 percent possibility of occurrence. Some areas on the map do portray no data, however this is only a small part of the map. In the future global distribution of reddish, we can see there's still a large, a large green, dark green area. The parts that showed no data in the current global distribution is still the same in this map. Also, the higher possibility colors like red is decreasing slightly. For the regional distribution, both current and future biochar model was applied. The current, the current regional distribution map is shaded by mostly light green. In according to the legend, this indicates medium, a medium to 0.5 to 5 percentile. The future regional distribution map is unlike the current one, shaded in mostly dark green which indicates of which we can read from the legend is a low 0 to 2.5 percent which means that the suitability has decreased i also included an eco crop module for both current and future global distribution eco crop modeling identifies plant species with key climate in soil, in soil requirements that match this unidentified or entered species data. Eco crop maps indicate where other crop meets the requirement of my crop with this radish, which means that there could be a possibility that my crop could occur in these localities somewhere in the future. The excellent red condition increases as can be seen when a comparison is drawn between the current and future global distribution maps of the eco crop. Between the current global distribution and future global distribution maps done by the domain model, it can be seen that the occurrence of reddish will decrease globally in the future. This decrease could be seen when focusing on one continent, for example, Africa. In the current global distribution map, the area of the continent is shaded in mostly dark green, which indicates a 51 to 90 percent likeliness. Also, in light green, which indicates a 91 to 95 percent likeliness. In the future global distribution map, Africa is more darker green, which means that the likelihood of occurrence will decrease in the future. The plot analysis has five components where I focused on potential, limitations, opportunities and threats in regard with my species with it, which is radish. Radish is a crop that is not immune to climate change and the negative impacts associated with climate change. We know that the climate is changing and in the future we will be experiencing climate change to the extreme. Using the global and regional distribution map, maps, one can clearly see the likeliness of reddish to occur will decrease by the year 2050. This will happen both on a global and regional scale. Even though reddish is most likely to originate in China, it occurs more rapidly in the region of France and the surrounding countries like Germany, Poland and Peru. Radish has potential to grow and mature in just weeks. Therefore, production of domesticated radish should be increased as wild radish has an invasive potential. Here are the list of references I used to set up this presentation. And yeah, guys, we came to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you on the next occasion. Bye-bye.